again. Uh, this time, uh, I actually bought this one, and this is the G255, which is the clone of the MS250, or 025, whatever you want to think of it as. Here, open up here. I've been focused on the big saws so much that I hadn't really thought about the smaller ones. And so actually, when I started doing the chainsaw carvings, I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have a nice mid-sized saw to use. This has something else in it. Don't know what that is. Another gas can. Dual pouch is completely blown out. Another set of wrenches and a screwdriver. I've got lots of those now. G255 Blue Thunder. Oh, I know what this is. I bought a bar and chain with this one. So that little white package is the chain. So yeah, I actually got this one to use on the carvings, and I didn't want to uh, ask for another free saw from them, uh, and then shortly after that they offered another free saw, and it should be here next week. I actually bought this and a G3800, and then they're sending me a G4500, and the... 38 and 4500s are the new series they just released, uh, the John Cutters. Uh, they're very inexpensive little saws. Uh, they are made, uh, they're clones of Zenoa saws, which is owned by Husqvarna. Apparently, the Zenoa saws are very popular on the Asian market. And, uh, a little bit on the European market, but they're not real well known here in the States, apparently. Uh, so maybe this uh, lineup from Postforma will actually, uh, or from Farmertech, will actually change all that. Uh, I actually own a Zenoa clone, which is the 62cc Chinese saw that I have uh, from the, the other company. I can't think of it offhand. Boy, it's a nice little dude. Yeah, see, this is what I was looking for, nice and lightweight. Uh, arguably, the MS250 is one of the most popular still models out there. I don't know that it's their highest seller, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Uh, because it's a lightweight saw, it's 45 cc's, and, uh, you know, you've got decent power for uh, the weight that it, that it has. So, let's see... There we go. So it's got the typical uh, air filter that is on these smaller saws, uh, just a flock screen. It's not the cartridge like, uh, like the bigger saws have. Yup. All right, that all looks in order. I am curious to see what type of uh, clutch this dude has. Whether it's a rim clutch or a spur clutch. Sprocket. It's a sprocket clutch. I was kind of hoping for a rim because I have other 3 8 rims. I could have put a 8 uh, tooth uh, on there. But anyway. Enough about that. Let's put the bar on it. I only got a 16 inch bar for it. As I said, I intend to use this for carving. And uh, for those of you that want to see more about the reviews of these saws, uh, since I am getting into the carving thing so much these days, watch the carving videos because I'll be including review material in those.
Okay, so the past couple of saws came to me broken. One of them I knew was going to come broken. The other one, uh, <laughs> this little part right here, was stripped out. Uh, those are those parts are on the way. Uh, hopefully, we'll have them early next week, and we will do a couple of videos on getting those saws fixed up, and uh, we'll do a better uh, test on the 444 uh, because that saw is pretty impressive specs. So I really want to see what it can do. Uh, and before long, I should be doing the video of the 388, the 444, and the 660 all milling. Uh, I'm going to do one cut each with, with them through that big ash log out there, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I mean, I know the 660 is going to smoke the other two, but I'm really curious out of the other two which one is going to be the better saw. Uh, they're only one cc different. So this little guy is 45 cc's. And he's going to become one of my main carving saws. I'll get through the little bastard. There we go. So, brake works. Uh, this one has the old style gas caps that you undo with the switch or a screwdriver. So that means it's actually more like an 025, but... Boy, that didn't come up very far. I stuck on something in there. Get up out of the way. Obviously, there's no gas in it. I just set it up right with the caps off. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, that's a, a really good feeling little saw. Uh, then again, it's designed after, like I said, one of the more popular still models out there. Uh, let's stick some gas and oil in it and go cut something. Alright, I already put gas and oil in it. I haven't started it yet. I'm about to find out.
so uh, <laughs> camera died about halfway through that. Didn't realize it. Did my end of video rant a whole bit. Figured out that the uh, camera was dead. So we're going back to. Uh, <laughs> we're going to cut a couple more slices. I don't know if it got the tune. I uh, tuned the high on here and got it running a little better. So I'll make a couple more slices and then uh, I guess I'll do my rant again. <laughs> So there you go. Giving it a, a quick tune-up certainly helped. Uh, cutting a little faster than those first couple of cuts. And I gotta admit, this is some long, dead, dried out walnut. And uh, it's pretty hard stuff at this point. But uh, 45 cc's did the job just fine. Uh, as I stated before, I bought this one because I needed a mid-range saw for the chainsaw carvings, which I'm getting into more and more. And uh, I figure there's two things that will really test the saw out. Uh, one is milling, because you're at high RPMs with an extreme load, and you're going for a long time at that RPM with that load. And the other thing would be chainsaw carving because you're at high RPMs and you're not, you don't have a load on as often, but you stay at high RPMs quite a bit when you're carving, or at least I do. Uh, that G111 so far has been a champ. I mean, I've got the dime tip bar on it with the quarter inch pitch chain, and I'm holding that thing at full throttle quite a bit to do a lot of the work, and it doesn't seem to have a problem at all. It hasn't started sputtering or spitting and uh, runs just fine. Uh, I did get my MS192T running. Turns out it was the dang fuel bulb, the, the primer bulb. One of the only saws, I mean, not, not the only saw, but one of the only saws still has the primer bulb, and that's what was wrong with it. Two years that thing's been sitting because of that. <laughs> I didn't even think to check it, but got the kit for it. I went ahead and put the new carburetor on it and stuck that, uh, and it still wouldn't start. I stuck that fuel bulb on and bam, fixed it. So it's running again. Uh, but this one is going to be my uh, my main, like, I'll use one of the bigger saws to do the big cuts, and then this one will be doing all the smaller cuts, and then the dime tip, of course, for the getting a little more detailed, and then I switch to the grinders after that. But, uh, yeah, I, I can't speak for the longevity of these saws, but for the money, uh, they run. And they work good. I mean, they, they do the job that they're supposed to do without any issue at all. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, a year from now if I keep doing the chainsaw carvings, especially because then I'll be cutting uh, like year round. But uh, uh, during the winters here, I cut a crap ton of firewood because I heat my shop with firewood, and I use probably two to three uh, uh, cords a winter. And uh, I'm building a tiny house next year, and it's going to be wood heated as well. Same method, it's going to have a rocket mass heater. So uh, I'll be probably doubling that to keep the house warm as well. Uh, 
but like I said, I cut a lot of firewood, so these saws get a lot of use. But now, with adding the chainsaw carving, yeah, this is uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they hold up. And rest assured, I will let you know. Now, that being said, as it stands right now, I'm pretty impressed with these saws. Uh, they've all come out of the box running. Uh, granted, the uh, 444 had the, the bad uh, uh, chain tensioner, uh, but that's like such a small thing. I mean, it's like, like I said in the, in the video about it, it's two screws, replace the parts, put the two screws back in, you're back in business. It's just getting the part. If you don't want to wait for it to come from China, you can go get the tensioner for a still MS-440 and bam, you're, you're setting up and running again. Uh, if you can wait for it to come in from China, you can buy it for a couple of bucks and pay the shipping and it's still probably going to be about the same price as what you pay for stills here in the States. Uh, or if you can get a hold of a store and say, hey, this came with a bad tensioner. People have uh, commented and uh, a couple have emailed me about issues they've had with Bulls Pharma. Uh, not to knock the guys because I'm sure that they gave it their best attempt, but there's a like 13 or 14 hour delay between here and there. So, like, when you email them, you got to wait a day and sometimes two days before you get an email back. Uh, I'm dealing with them for, you know, the, the, well, I bought this one, but the, the next one that's coming, the uh, G440. Uh, G4500, uh, they're sending me as a free sample. They're also sending me, they just started carrying it, it's a drill attachment that goes on to the uh, 255. And uh, so they're going to send me one of those to try out too, which I thought was really neat because that's what they offered. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. That would be handy around the farm. So, uh, but yeah, as it stands right now, I'm really impressed. I think they're going to be good saws and last me a long time. Does that mean I don't think I'll have to work on them? No, I'm pretty sure I'll have to work on them, but, you know, that's part of owning saws. Uh, either you take them in to be worked on, or you work on them yourself. I happen to be one of those people that work on them myself. Not a big deal. Um, so, but I, I'll be curious. And, and if in a year's time they're all breaking down constantly and I'm having all kinds of issues, rest assured I will let you know uh, that you know, hey, unless you're only wanting to get a year's worth of use out of it, you know, there you are. But I don't think I'm going to have to tell you that. I think that uh, these things are going to last me a while, and uh, I'm going to do some carbon. I'm actually really enjoying the carbon. So, if you really want to keep up with uh, how well these saws are doing, watch the carving videos, because I'm going to mention in there, uh, in, the video, in those videos, how these things are holding up, especially after they've been at it for a while. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching, and uh, hit that subscribe button, and keep up with this, it's going to get interesting.